Hi everyone, I am Noelle with Noelle Rollins Art. So today we are going to talk about the path forward, what to do after you've experienced a really tough time, or in this case, the loss of someone you love. So I wanna to share today one thing to do after death that nobody tells you to do, that I have found to be a really big, special thing if you can do it right away. And if it's too late for right away, then the best or the next best time is now. So I wanna, hopefully you can still um, take some of this advice or pass it along to someone else so that they can use it. So I wanna read a chapter out of my book today. Um, this is my book, Sacred Hellos, Messages from Heaven. And the chapter I'm going to read is called One Thing to Do After Death That Nobody Told Me. So I'm gonna kind of be looking off screen a little bit, but that's what I'm doing is reading. And I'll stop periodically and we can kind of have a little side conversation beyond what the book says about. So here we go. It was November and I was desperately looking through old photos. It had been 10 months since my mom died and I was missing her like crazy. I found countless perfectly posed photos, pictures of the dogs, random sunsets, birthday parties. Finally, I found the picture I was looking for. It was the dining room in my parents' home. The photo featured a large dining room table fully set for our last family Christmas. It was a gathering before my mom would die unexpectedly just a few weeks later. What I loved most about this photo, ironically, was not the actual dining room table. It was the way my mom, my mom hung a wreath in the window or the mirror that was on the wall. And she had this faux finish on it that she made where she painted it to look like it was crackling. The photo captured how she hosted all her personal touches, her showing her love for us that day. And it was really special too, because we all had our significant others with us so you just picture this large table and my mom always just loved to show how much she cared with her cooking and her entertaining. So there's music playing, oh, so special. So you ready for my one thing to do that nobody tells you? Here we go. Take photographs. Go into your loved one's space and take a photo of the way the reading glasses are sitting on the side table how the spice cabinet looks, the jacket hanging on the hook. Photograph the wall of framed photos, the collection of ball caps or the figurines. Capture the yard or the tools on the workbench in the garage. The view from the kitchen table or even your favorite chair or even the kitchen tile. I did this at my grandma's house and she's still with us, but I, um. I knew she wouldn't be in that house forever. And so one of the last times I visited there, I went through and I took photos of her bathroom tile floor. She had this really unique tile floor and um, like the Dixie cup dispenser on the wall and the stained glass chandelier, just simple things that really remind me of my entire life going to visit at that home. So back to the book. My dad is more of a minimal minimalist. In mourning, our mom took up most of his energy that first year. He had very little emotional attachment to the stuff that he and my mom shared. None of it connected him to her. He carried his memories in other ways. For me, however, I see my mom in all of it. I see her hands arranging the flowers into a vase that's on the table. Her turquoise ring and silver sterling jewelry adorn her fingers and her wrists and reminds me of seeing her peeling vegetables before making her famous veggie pasta salad. These things, especially now that she's gone, trigger loving memories of her. They make me feel connected to my mom's energy and her spirit and her humanness. In the time after someone passes, there is a brief period when the way that they had things is still in place. For me, having photos is something that I did accidentally. I wish I had done more and had photos of every room. I wish I could remember her lamp, what she was reading, the way her clothes looked all hanging together in her closet. 
that November, when I was looking through the photos, my goal was to put together a small photo album for each of my siblings, filled with the images of the houses we had all lived in together. The photos brought reminders of the bold wallpapers, the wall hangings, the way the bamboo plant sat under the stained glass panel and the trio of kitchen windows. I knew each of us five kids would connect to different parts of each photo. Take pictures. Even better, do not wait until people start dying to start taking photos. At your gatherings from now on, do not limit your photo to the perfectly cropped smiling faces. Zoom out and capture the room also. Capture the cars in the driveway. They can serve as fun reminders of the different eras of life. Take pictures of the, of the decor, collections, and take people are pictures of people in the stands at the sporting events, not just the athlete. Capture the things that have blended into the background, including the people who are not asking or expecting to be the center of attention. So you guys wanna see the photo of the dining room table that I was looking so desperately for is this. It's just something really simple, the mirror, the stained glass things, just the way the shade is decorated, so sweet. And then just some other random photos that I just love that make me think of people that I love. I wanted to share in the, in the book. So whether you're moving a parent out of their home into an assisted living center, you are visiting your parents just up in age or your siblings, notice the things that they love and just kind of snap some subtle photos of the area, their, their homes, the way their books are. Simple things, you'll be so glad that you have them. You can slowly start gathering that. And um, they have brought me so much comfort through the years of just the humanness. I know my mom's okay and her spirit is okay, but the humanness of this life that she lived and all of her human quirks and, and um, hobbies and passions that she had that remind me of her are really special. And those photos helped capture that. A lot of that and then they trigger other memories so that is my one thing for you to do you can do it after somebody passes or go do it now take a photo of your kiddos when they're sleeping take a photo of their bedrooms how they look I took a photo of my daughter's bedroom and bathroom when she was um, finishing her senior year of high school just the simplest thing where now she lives on her own and having just that moment in time captured She's still here, and yet it still brings me such a fun um, feeling to remember those days where she is here. So, all right, what would you guys add? I would love to hear in the comments. Is there anything that you would recommend doing um, or that you wish you did after your loved one passed that um, you, you would wish someone told you? So, all right, you guys, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to continue on with this Path Forward series all about learning from loss, times of change, coming out of this pandemic, all the things as we rebuild life again and take all of those lessons and a tough time and we use it as fuel to really help us move forward. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.